So today we're gonna to be building a new board that is something I really kind of don't wanna build because I already built it once and it takes a long time. It took about three days to build the last one. And also if you've been following me for any amount of time, you know that I really don't like bigger boards. I like 40% boards, 50% and I'm kind of like branching out to 60s now. But this is actually my dad's Christmas gift this year. He asked me for a keyboard that he could actually use because I've tried to convert both my parents to little 40% boards and they just can't, they want full size boards. So I already built my mom one of these, but today we're gonna be building this, which is the Scotto 108 that doesn't even fit on my camera here. I mean, you could see it doesn't even fit, but we're just gonna dive in, we're gonna build it. This is probably gonna be a multi-day video. So my shirt will likely change throughout this. We'll just jump in and we'll go from there. So from what you can see, this is basically a whole board. It just barely fits in the view. But what I want to do first on this, I'm going to actually assemble this top plate to the middle plate. It's just a sandwich mount design. So you can see there's a bottom, a middle, which is the plate. And then there's this top layer. But I just want to assemble these two together because it will make it more rigid and it won't have as much warping to it. So if I get these together first, it makes it a little bit easier to build the whole thing. So all I'm going to be doing with that is just using heat set inserts in here. So I'm going to do that really quick. and I'll be back after. You can see I have all the inserts into the top half of the case here. And I wanted to mention, if you look here, I kind of like melted the plastic around a little bit more to get them to seat better because this is going to be relying on the force of the screw to kind of hold it together, going to like squeeze between them. So by doing that, it just holds them in better. But what I want to do at this point is take this top plate and then also grab my actual plate. And I'm going to just screw this to this first and then also put all my standoffs in because it'll make it a lot easier when I go to assemble the case later. All the standoffs are in the plate now and you can still see that it is warping it won't be as warped once i screw down all the edge screws because that's what will really hold it in place but for now they're just in there and it just makes it easier to assemble later but at this point what we can do is put the switches in and i'm just going to be using these here which are otuma silvers they're pretty cheap so they're really good for a board like this and my dad won't really tell the difference between these and like a nice expensive switch so these will be fine for this build So there are all the switches in the board. You can see that I have these generic, like no name AliExpress stabilizers in here. And all I did for those is I just took some dielectric grease and just put it on the bars real quick just to make them a little bit better. But other than that, what I'm gonna do now is flip this over and we're gonna start by just doing the column. So I'm gonna go through and do all that. I'm gonna be using some straightened copper wire, just some 16 gauge copper wire. I'll be going through, cutting them, wiring those all up. And I'll be after that, which we'll talk about the rows next. All the columns are done and what you can see here is that with these stabilized keys i kind of just route it how it makes most sense it makes most sense to run it like that the same with this one on the numpad it just kind of makes the most sense like that but what i'm going to do at this point is i'm going to start with the top row and do the diodes and then i'm going to call it a night there because if you see if i take a copper wire and just put it up top here there's no intersection so i don't need to do anything about that it's not going to short out whereas this one here will have intersections that i need to actually insulate so it's a lot longer process and i'm running out of energy tonight so i'm just going to do the top one and then i'll see you guys in tomorrow which will just be a second for you. So I'm just going to do that really quick. There's the first row all wired up. You can see all the diodes running to it. And my camera actually died halfway through, like doing the time lapse for that. So I'm not sure how much of that process you saw. It's the same as any of my other boards. It's just kind of did that. So probably an indicator that's a good time to call it for the day and go to bed and then finish it up tomorrow. So tomorrow's goal is to finish the rest of the matrix. So yeah, I'll see you guys in just a second. I'm going to go to bed now and then tomorrow we'll finish the board up. So yesterday I finished a matrix, which you just saw the time lapse of. Here is the fully completed matrix. Here you can see we have everything assembled on the board. And at this point, all that needs to be done is to wire up everything to the controller. Now this matrix is obviously massive. It requires 27 pins in total. A Pro Micro, which I actually conveniently have right here, has only 18 pins. So that obviously won't accommodate the 27 that this needs. So what I'm gonna be using is one of my favorite boards I've been using recently, which is just an RP2040 board. This is a 16 megabyte board, so it's 16 megabytes of flash, which is really nice. But this has 28 total GPIO pins and we need 27, so that perfectly works. So what I'm gonna do, so I'm just gonna time-lapse through wiring this all up to the controller, and we'll talk after when we assemble the case.
So you can see that everything's wired to the controller now. And what's kind of cool about this board is that everything can run really nice and neat along this like top point where there are no keys. So like here it can run really nicely in there and then route like that. What I have to do at this point is test the controller to make sure everything works. Then I'm gonna hot glue it into the case here and then seal everything up. And then we'll talk about the keycaps because they're kind of cool for this build. So I'm gonna be back after I do all that. So there are all the screws in the bottom of the board and there are a lot here to prevent the board from warping so you can see like there's not a warp to it anymore and at this point all we have to do is install the keycaps which i recently designed these new ones here that are printed in dual filament on my bamboo lab behind me there and they came out really good i'm really happy with how they came out they are on the repo if you want to print them yourself they have like a nice little one millimeter scoop on them so i wanted to quickly just jump in and show how these keycaps are printed because i designed them to be printed at 0.12 layer height which means they wouldn't require any supports so you can see kind of like a top down here that there's no supports at all because they are dual color they have a lot of waste material just kind of how these bamboo labs printers work but with that let's just get back to the rest of the build now so i'm going to install those really quick and then we're going to do a typing test so let me just go install the keycaps now So there are all the keycaps on the board here, as you can see. I think they look really nice. If we look really close, you can see they're dual printed, but they're pretty smooth still because they're printed at 0.12 layer height. So that keeps them really smooth. Up top here, we have the too many keys because first of all, I don't like 100% boards, but also there was a compromise I made because if I did F1 through 12 here, the legends would have to get too small. They wouldn't print reliably. So I think the too many keys joke there works out pretty good. So what we're gonna do now is do a typing test on it because I think these sound pretty pretty decent for being some cheap switches. So we're gonna go type on it and we'll talk a little bit more about it. And that's what I got. So there is the fully completed build of the Scotto 108. And if I actually hold it up here, you can see it a little bit better. So there's the full build. You can see that it has the nice like sandwich mount design here with this like pearlescent type of color. I think the white on black looks really nice, but this isn't the only one I made. So if you hold on one second, I've made more than one board this week and it's been a very busy week. So I made this one, which is actually for my mom. This one here is for my dad, but this is the Scotto 108 yet again with the black on or white on black keycaps. I can't think it's 2 a.m. on Christmas Eve now. So I made it just in time, but yeah, this is the one for my mom here. I think it looks pretty good. And then I have this board, the Scotto 61 for my brother, which is yet again, a 60% board. I don't really have much else to say here other than I am tired now. <laughs> I have put a lot of work into these boards over the last week and hopefully my parents will be able to use them. I'm more confident my brother will be able to use this one, but we'll, we'll see if my parents, I'll, I'll post an update on somewhere if my parents are using this in a month after today, we'll see. Too many keys for me. I like that there. I'm calling it a night. It's, it's 2 a.m. I think I said that already. I, I don't even know at this point. Comment and subscribe if you like this, and I'll see you next time.